Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be taking a look at the Mustang and its variants for United Logistics and Military Corporation, or ULMC. This video is to kind of address where these ships fit within the lineup of our organization, where do we anticipate using them, and for what functions. And the honest overall impression that I have of this lineup of ships is not overwhelmingly positive. They're marketed as an alternative starting platform to the Aurora that is a little bit more combat focused as a result. As a whole, they are faster than the Aurora series, but they also have a major Achilles heel, and this applies to every variant in the entire lineup. And that is the, while the cockpit is made entirely of glass, which is excellent for visibility, it is also not that durable and pretty easy to shoot out, especially with ballistic weapons, since ballistic weapons are supposed to do a little bit of damage to the hull, passing right through shields. So as a result of that, these ships tend to be very, very fragile, and I think that they're going to be candy for organizations who are looking to destroy ships or basically take out ships and then salvage those ships for profit. Because when you take out the cockpit, you kill the pilot, but you pretty much leave the rest of the ship, the guns, the armor, the engines, the power core, uh, other basically parts of the ship unscathed, making it potentially very valuable to look at trying to salvage these ships uh, for profit. First up is the Mustang Alpha. This is the starter slash jack of all trades variant of the Mustang lineup. Its standalone price as of March 2016 is $30, and this puts it square in between that of the Aurora MR and that of the Aurora LN and the same price as the Aurora LX. Now, the Mustang lineup, and particularly the Alpha, was marketed as the more combat oriented, the more aggressive oriented starter ship alternative to the more utilitarian jack-of-all-trades, well, more well-rounded Aurora-class ships, and as such, it does have a couple of advantages in that role. First off is speed. It has a very respectable combat maneuvering base speed of 230 as of right now. Again, as more equipment is added to the game, uh, that number may fluctuate a little bit depending on how you exactly outfit one. Uh, but it also has a 715 cruise speed. This means that it's going to be able to track down most enemy ships on the battlefield. Equally, it can also outrun most other ships on the battlefield. There's a few out there that it can't, but it's certainly within the same speed margin of other fighter platforms such as the Avenger or the 300 series or the Gladius or the Hornet series or the Sabre. So it certainly can match those ships, at least when it comes to speed. Firepower is one of those things that I think it's more of a personal preference thing, but it does come with four size one gun mounts. Now, by default, it only has a pair of M3A lasers, which felt to, frankly, underwhelming when it came to engaging in combat in the universe. You can go to the hollow table and equip and two additional size one guns from either rental equipment weapons, uh, weapons from other ships or through items acquired from the Voyager Direct Store and with four guns it felt like it was adequately armed. I didn't feel that it was quite able to punch above its weight as I did with the Aurora LN at its price point but it's certainly decent enough. Again, it's an adequate amount of firepower. Now a couple of the cons to this ship compared to comparably priced Aurora's First off, it can carry cargo. It does, the Alpha variant does come with its cargo carrier, but it carries less cargo than similarly priced Aurora's, which currently is supposed to be able to carry 13 units of cargo versus 10 units of cargo for the Mustang. But I suspect that those numbers will change as soon as cargo gameplay and economic gameplay are added to the universe and then balanced. That being said, I always suspect that the Mustang will carry a little bit less cargo per trip than a comparably priced Aurora will. So keep that in mind depending on what kind of roles that you may see yourself fulfilling. The other disadvantage or it could be advantage, I'm going to kind of put this in a neutral personal preference thing, is the fact that it cannot carry any missiles. You cannot even equip any missile racks on the platform. So while the Aurora MR only has two guns, it still has the capability of mounting a quad missile rack. The Aurora LX, while only having two guns, does have a quad missile rack. The Aurora LN has two size one, two size two, and a missile rack. 
a quad missile rack. So compared to some variants of the Aurora there, you're giving up missiles for two additional guns, but if you equip all lasers, of course, you're never gonna run out of ammunition, so you have a little bit of longevity. So where does this ship fit within United Logistics Military Corporation, you may ask? And we're envisioning it, utilizing it as a fast escort fighter in situations where the speed of an Aurora may be a hindrance, whether it's necessary to move quickly through hostile territory or whether it's escorting ships that are just simply too fast for the Aurora to be of much use. For instance, we don't know what the speed of, a, say, a Banu Merchantman is going to be, but it's suspected that it'll probably be a little bit faster than possibly the Aurora can manage to keep up with. So in those situations, we plan on utilizing ships like the Mustang Alpha to fulfill those roles. Next up is the Mustang Beta. This is the touring slash exploration variant of the Mustang lineup, and as of March 2016, cost $40 standalone. Now the ship is essentially identical to the Mustang Alpha in terms of most performance and statistical categories with really four notable exceptions. One, the cargo carrier has been replaced by these living quarters which allow you to log out safely in deep space during exploration missions, but as a result of that the ship is incapable of carrying any cargo, so you have a zero cargo capacity capability. It also features a little bit more fuel and therefore a little bit more mass. Right now it doesn't seem like this is adequately reflected, or I should say accurately reflected, as its performance in terms of combat maneuvering speed and cruise speed are identical to that of the Mustang Alpha. Finally, the other major thing that the Beta has over the Alpha is it comes equipped with a jump drive, allowing you to jump from star system to star system day one of the Persistent Universe. So how do we plan on utilizing the Mustang Beta in ULMC? Well, primarily as a fast scout light reconnaissance platform, whether it be for combat operations or resource gathering operations. Next up is the Mustang Delta. This is the fighter combat variant of the Mustang lineup and its price as of March 2016 is $65 when it is available for sale. It is a limited ship, so it's not always available for sale, but during special events and things like that, you can acquire one for $65. Now, the ship does have some noticeable differences over the Alpha and Beta variants and the Gamma and Omega racing variants as far as that goes. One of the major ones being the inclusion of unguided rocket pods. Now, it's still not clear if we're going to be able to swap out those unguided pods for standard missile racks capable of carrying guided missiles at this point. It still maintains the four size one gun slots, and it has a couple of other little features such as special armor that's supposed to reduce your infrared signature, make it harder for infrared missiles to lock onto you, that being said, the state of sensor gameplay and missile gameplay at this juncture is very rudimentary and it's been hit with the nerf bat extensively. So we're going to have to kind of revisit how well all of that works out when weapons get a true balance pass sometime, probably in the more distant future. I expect weapons, weapon balances to be one of the last things they tackle uh, once the game hits an official beta release stage, and that's not going to be for quite some time. Currently, in their current iteration, I find that the unguided missiles are a little underwhelming for what I think they should do in terms of damage, especially against larger, slower ships, which would seem to be what they would be aimed at, for lack of a better pun. Now, a couple of other things to keep in mind about the Delta variant versus the Alpha and the Beta. It cannot carry the cargo hauler module, so cargo hauling cargo is out of the question. It also doesn't have a bed, so logging out mid-mission or in the depths of space may also be limited as a possibility as well. Now it does have a little bit slower top speed at 225 in combat mode and 700 in cruise mode, so it is slightly slower and a little bit on the lower end of the spectrum when it compares to other fighters. And I think another one of the major drawbacks of the ship is at $65, you're going to have to start comparing it against the Avenger and the 300i, which while feature fewer guns, do have guided missiles and slightly larger guns. Where does this ship fit within ULMC's framework for operations? Well, of course it's naturally going to fit in for escort missions and combat air patrol missions around resource operations as well as, again, fast escort. But also we plan on utilizing this variant 
in a light strike role against enemy larger enemy ships such as hull series ships and things like that where you need to basically fly in maybe hit a target with those unguided missiles to get the shields down do a lot of damage quickly and get out of dodge and finally we have the mustangs Gamma and Omega. These are the racing variants of the Mustang platform, and the standalone price for the Gamma as of March 2016 is $55. Now, the Gamma and the Omega are essentially identical. The Omega came as part of a special promotional bundle with certain AMD graphics cards, and in the future it may include a few more overclocked default systems compared to the Gamma, but as of right now, statistically on paper, they are identical ships other than the paint job. And both of these ships trade a, well, they're two fixed guns for an additional engine. This makes them faster at a top speed of 280 in combat maneuvering and over 800 in cruise mode. And the proposed role for these ships within ULMC would be in a fast intercept role as an alternative to the much more expensive M50 Interceptor or the 350R. And I can certainly see it utilized in that fast interceptor role to maybe hunt down and disable ships before that they, before they can make the jump uh, to either quantum drive or hyperspace or to jump drive eventually between star systems. However, of all of the Mustang lineup, this will probably be utilized the least of the lot. Personally, I found taking them into combat has been a little bit futile right now in the universe as well as other combat scenarios in Arena Commander whether it be co-op Vandal Swarm or Arena Commander Battle Royale Squadron Battle Modes, because the two guns that are currently on it just right now aren't powerful enough to do much other than it seems like tickle the enemy, for lack of a better term. So I'm not overall very impressed with the ship. I can certainly see the argument for it being used in the Interceptor role, but again, I expect that it will be used very limited within organizational operations.